In this video, I stiffen up the trailer, make the bunks, fit the guards, and more. Welcome back, guys. What am I doing under here? Well, in the last video, I finished with not being that happy about the deflection I saw with just the bulb sitting on the on its mount over there. It's 15 millimeters sag here. So I've got this drawing of the typical ramp scenario where the ramp apparently in New Zealand is generally 1 to 12 ratio of the slope or roughly 4.8 degrees. This is what I was looking at the drawing for. I wanted to see if the bulb's fully up and you get a line parallel to the water line, how much will it clear the back of the trailer here? It's quite a bit, it's enough. What I might do, put some blocks under here and take the boat weight down a little bit onto these rails and actually see what happens. I hadn't really noticed this before, but because of all the welding of those plates down there that hold the suspension, they're already slightly bent. So let's lower the weight of the boat and the bulb because the bulb's not sitting hard on its cradle at the moment. That's the full weight of the boat and the keel sitting on the trailer. Partly I wanted to see how much the suspension drops with the full weight of the boat on it. I can't detect any more bend than was there on the outside rail. It looks like there's more on the inside. You can see the gap there. It looks like sort of 5 sixteenths. It's bending down. Before it was 472. Now it's 455. It's roughly 17 millimeters. The boat's moved down. Um, nearly three quarters of an inch. It means the trailer's going to be quite stiff for this boat. But it also means that I've got more road clearance in the center. I designed the clearance, the road clearance of this cradle here to be six inches or 150 millimeters. It's 210 millimeters nearly. So if I think I put something solid through between the arms at the back there, maybe put some rails on top of the outside rails. I think that'll stiffen it up well enough. It's raining today so I can't do much on the trailer while it's outside here but as you can see I started setting up this um, strengthening rail that's above the um, side rail there. I'm making it out of 20 millimeter solid round. Because that welding pulled that rail there out of straight a bit, both of them, I'm actually straightening it out a bit by putting that RHS on top, 3 inches by 3 sixteenths wall. I'm going to put a bit of channel across the back there. It's absolutely necessary from what I saw when I loaded the boat on it. There's a storm coming and I worked till 8 o'clock last night to get the trailer under the boat again. There's still a few projects on it to do, which I can do while it's under the boat. I've added this cross member here to strengthen up the rear end of it. Um, this bit of flat bar will go under here. What do you reckon guys? Strong enough now? I certainly hope so. Let's put the boat down on it again, see what happens. I've done a calculation of course to get about 50 to 100 kgs of, of tow ball weight. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. How close is that to my calculation given of course that the boat's not finished but um, things that are not on the boat will probably pretty much balance out things like um, the outboard, the anchor chain. Using the laser to centralize everything, all lined up for now. A good use for the wheels, I haven't turned into castings yet. And the remaining redwood, don't want to use that stuff ever again. The boat's level, without putting weight on the trailer, the trailer's level, I can start making the bunks. How about that? These measurements on port and starboard, are the same to the millimeter. That's quite promising. I tried wrapping 12 millimeter plywood under the boat and there's no way. I couldn't even get it under to start bending it. I decided to machine it down to eight millimeters. So there's three layers here and I'm just, haven't got glue in it yet, but I'm trying to simulate whether I can more flexible than it was. I'm 
trying to simulate whether I can get this under the boat and it'll look something like something like that. But the trouble is getting it into place. You can hear it creaking and groaning a bit. This paint is extremely tough, that's why I'm sliding the timber on it. The whole thing with this area here is it's extra wide because it's a conical shape underneath the hull and I'll be trimming a bit off the middle and a bit off one side of the ends to get something parallel that goes under the hull but fits the hull. It's got some real fight in it even after machining it down from 12 millimeters to 8 millimeters. I can hear it creaking, it doesn't like it. I just hope they aren't close to breaking. I'll give it some layers of double bias when I finish it off. Shall we glue this? Plywood. Looks pretty on the outside, but look what's inside. Did you hear that? <laughs> oh, I sure did. That's looking really good. It's just one of those jobs where I couldn't get my head around it. The boards were too stiff to bend in two layers, so I thought I'll, if I sleep on it, I'll find a solution. That's often the way. That's how it works for me. That's a nice snug fit on that side. And on that side. So there's some 20 millimeter close cell foam to go between that plywood and the boat. Well, laminating those aft bunks on either side went better than expected. It's not every day you can say that. There's two 12 mm, mm layers there, and there's some plywood to make that goes down and connects with the trailer. Will the boat make it out of the shed sitting on the trailer? It will drop down probably another 20, 25 millimeters, and I can see the laser, it's hard for you to see, shows that the um, door is too low by about two inches or 50 millimeters. So on my previous trailer, sailor, to get it in this shed, I used to have to let it down by the tires down, and that worked quite well. Not a bad weekend's work, got these laminated up. This block here, which is two layers of half inch plywood or 12 millimeters. I've got it sitting up on these blocks at the moment. These blocks are the thickness of the foam that will go between this plywood and the boat. Good Monday morning. The bunks are made up. Uh, they need to be dropped down 20 millimeters so I can drill the holes through the plywood into the frame. Then I can put these aside because these are not a high priority after that and then the mission is to build a post on the tow bar there that the winch will be mounted on and the V block that goes into the stem of the boat so that sounds like a day's work to me I just worked out I can't get it out until the trailer goes out from underneath the boat or the boat gets lifted up higher it's on to drilling the holes There it is.
I'm having to use lots of um, scraps to make up some plates and things for the winch post. Despite the rain, that's another job finished. The post for the winch and the snubbing block. Good Wednesday morning. The mission I've given myself for today is to mount these guards and put these gussets in here. Oops, 45 degrees, didn't quite work for this one. Ended up a bit long there. That's better. Rather than drag out this video to the end of the trailer build, there's a little bit to do. I want to make some posts to guide the boat onto the trailer when it's in the water. Um, I've got to do the tow bar extension. It's nice to have to think what's left. Anyway, I won't drag out this video. I'll wind it up here. I had a question as to how old the videos are and the videos are right up to date. This video that I'm shooting right now in a, an hour or two will be on YouTube. So you're pretty much just about seeing live what's happening. I'll get back to the rudder after this. Hopefully in a week, get most of that done. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.